Hello, I'm Dr. Ronnie Glenn coming to you from Daytona State College, and today we're going to talk about databases. And uh, kind of specifically what we're going to talk about with databases is, uh, well, how are databases used? Why are they important? And what kind of different databases are out there? And what kind of jobs go with databases? And then we're going to look a little bit about kind of the basic concepts of the most common types of databases. So let's first look at the definition. A uh, database is a structured set of data held in a computer, especially one that is accessible in various ways. Well, data can be a lot of things. It can be numbers and pictures and words and, you know, that's, that's all data. You put a structure around that data so that you actually can find it and access it, and you stick it on a computer, you've got essentially a database. And I'm not saying that data that is not on a database is not really a database, but that formal definition actually does pertain to computers. The different ways to access it, well, there's lots of ways to access this data, and we're going to look at some of those. So first, all businesses keep data. It's names and addresses and sales and receipts and lots of data. Very, in many cases, very richly type of data um, and, and very important, though, however, to the business. So kind of starting through the, uh, the, the evolution of databases, First, why do this? Why actually put it on a computer? Well, first, it, it's a very efficient way to store things. Um, it's not tremendously efficient to have a bunch of paper files all over the place. They take up a lot of space, they're hard to get to, they're time consuming. So this is an efficient, convenient, and cost-effective way to do this. Now, going back to the early days of the databases, you started with the good old text file. And even though that actually is kind of useful, the text files themselves, well, you know, if you're used to what we have with databases today, you can say, you know, that really wasn't the most useful format. Um, there were different ways of storing it in text files, delimited files, fixed width files, and a lot of data is still held that way. But, um, you know, we can kind of move forward. So let's do that. Now, as we move forward to things like spreadsheets and spreadsheets that store and hold data on a computer in a structured form, well, that is a database. Spreadsheet files are a database, or, or, or is a type of database. Um, but it's very, you know, it's a very straightforward and simple type of database, but it kind of gets you started in the concept of this rows and columns and this two dimensionality and that there's a structure to it. And uh, so a spreadsheet is one specific type. And if you have a good understanding of spreadsheets, you can move very quickly and easily into a good understanding of how databases work. Now, as we mature forward, we're looking here at Microsoft Access. Um, and now get these things of billing to put types of templates because the structure of data, um, you know, a structure of data that is your contact data from one application to the next will look essentially the same. That structure itself is a pattern that can be reused with different types of data. This is uh, Microsoft Access. This is essentially what we call a desktop database. It uh, isn't really designed to be accessed by multiple users at the same time, but on your computer it's a great way to store information and you do have this ability to uh, transfer and share it because it saves it in files and those files can be transferred to other people. But when we're really talking about that, we're, we're going to the next step. This concept of multiple users of access, this architecture where the database is held in one place and multiple people access it from lots of other different types of places. And um, we're going to talk about some of those databases, but that's where we really get into the real power and, and usefulness of databases. So let's look at some of those different types of databases that are there. Well, I'll start with what I had talked about before, Access, that good old desktop database, which is an extremely popular database. It's easy to use. It's easy to create interfaces for. It's easy to figure out ways to structure the data. There's lots of examples. Okay. And that is the beauty of Microsoft Access. Now, it falls apart when you really get into that concept of having lots of people needing to access the data that is associated with it. So let's move that next step. Oracle. Oracle is a very high-end database. We call it high-end in that uh, it's capable of handling lots of different types of situations for storing and managing and accessing data. And uh, it has all the analysis tools and all these things. But Oracle's um, more than that. It's actually a, a full application platform. So if you look at Oracle as a database, well, yeah, there is a database called Oracle. It has a version. It does the things that relational databases do. It's available on multiple operating systems. 
But it's even more than that. Oracle's the company, and uh, there's a whole lot built around Oracle. Huge support base of people that use Oracle that actually um, have organized and they work together. Certifications, and there's even an Oracle University. So if you're a company and you're trying to decide what type of database to use for your um, very sophisticated applications, knowing that you're going to need lots of people to help run and manage the data, um, but you need to know that those people are trained and certified to be able to do this, this is a very good choice. Microsoft SQL Server, another enterprise level database. Um, it also is a full platform. Uh, one of the beauties of Microsoft SQL Server is the fact that it is integrated with the other Microsoft tools. Um, and for people that actually run shops that are built on top of Microsoft Server, it's a great choice for doing things with databases. I would have to tell about open source databases. MySQL is not the only open source database. Um, it is a very popular database. It is free. It has support for almost everything that you want a relational database to do. I say almost because there's some things that I, I do in my database programming that MySQL does not support. Um, but uh, it, you know, most of it is there. Uh, it is, by the way, uh, free might be not the exactly perfect term for it because it is sold and supported by Oracle. So the very sophisticated versions of MySQL actually do have a cost to them. And there is support, though, to go with them. So if you're choosing MySQL as a database, that actually is important if you're an enterprise or a large company that uh, you do have a company that stands behind it. So what about the jobs? You know, what kind of things do database people do? And I can use that term loosely, database people. These are people that know and understand how databases work and actually can do things with databases. Well, one of the top jobs for databases is administrator. Okay, somebody's got to run and manage and back up and um, essentially run the database. And it's a fairly high paying job, uh, 73.5 roughly for t in the 2010 median pay. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a fairly, it's a relatively highly skilled job. So um, you do need people that really do know what they're doing. And it is a very important job um, with a lot of responsibility because you know, the company lives on its data. So you can't have uh, this ability to just, well, if, so we lost some data, big deal. That's not an acceptable way to go, you know, to have database administrators have a lot of responsibility. Also, a lot of people that work in the database field are computer programmers. And uh, those computer programmers do essentially a lot of database programming. Now, anybody working in the computer programming field really does need to have, um, if, as a professional programmer, you need to know how to work with databases. And that is one of the major database jobs. Now, in today's world, there's a lot of things that you do with databases, you know, between the designing of the database or the programming of the database or the administration of the database, all those things that you do, um, essentially now there's not a lot of different job descriptions for them um, specifically, but those are evolving uh, because of the fact that the databases are essentially ubiquitous in, in industry today. So uh, you will probably specialize in different things that you do. Let's talk a little bit about databases. Now, the most common type of database here is the relational database. And it's a relatively simple concept that data is stored in tables, and tables are made up of rows and columns. So that's a pretty easy type of concept here. Now, what really makes it a relational database is what we're going to talk about here in just the next few slides. First, we've got this concept of a key. A key is something that uniquely identifies the data in a row. The columns themselves are the field, or we call the fields, like first name and last name, are going to be, uh, that makes up the, the data and the structure of the data, but the rows themselves have a concept of a key, in this case the ID. And, and though you can have multiple people named John and multiple people named John Doe, there's only going to be one John Doe with an ID of one. It uniquely identifies that row. We call that a primary key. Now, what makes it relational is the ability to have multiple tables that actually can relate to each other. So let's look at a, kind of an example. Here's the best way to show this. Um, in this row, I have this guy, John Doe, who has an ID of one. Now, if I look at my other table down here, where I have a student ID, where I actually have the value of one, what I'm saying is that 
the data in this row pertains to the person in that other table that we've identified. So in this case, the three rows that I show you have student ID 1, which means that John Doe took these three classes and got these three grades. That's different types of data. Now, in reality, the data that you would use for managing classes and keeping grades is actually a lot more complex, which is a much more complex table structure than what I'm showing you here. But this simplification shows you that concept between the what's in one table and another table. And the relationship between these tables are called foreign keys. But what really makes relational databases useful is the fact that we have a common language that's used by almost every single relational database that allows you to manipulate both the database and the data. And it's called SQL, or Structured Query Language, but you're going to hear people call it SQL. So an example of SQL, in this case, we're doing, uh, the, we're actually manipulating the data structure itself where I create a couple of tables. I'm creating two tables here, students and classes, with the information. And that's actually the SQL that you see on the screen is the SQL that does this. What that gives me is something that has a structure that looks like this. That I have students and classes. Um, I have a primary key ID for students that uniquely identifies the students. I don't have a primary key with my classes here. I probably should, but I don't. Um, but I do have a foreign key, which is that student ID, which, which has a direct relationship to the ID field of the student's table. Once I have that, that's a relationship. Um, I can use that relationship to do things. And in this case, I'm looking at um, the concept of actually a query. A query is where you look into a database and you pull back the data that you want. We call those queries. And in the language SQL, a query has a very simple structure. So in this case, I'm going to select first name plus a space plus a last name. That gives me the name, the class, the semester, and the grade from two tables, students and classes. And I have a WHERE clause. And the WHERE clause is where the classes, the student ID field of the table classes, matches up or is equal to the ID field of the student's table. In other words, that's a join condition where I can put those two tables together and I get the data that I want from that query. Pretty basic query. It's not the most simple query that I could do because actually I'm joining two tables together. But it gives you that concept of the relationship between tables and how they put, are put together. So that's as far as I'm going to go into the actual database concepts here. Um, I do want to review what we've actually talked about here. Databases are used essentially everywhere. They're ubiquitous. And there's a lot of different types of products. And those products are really designed, designed around the needs of various companies and various things that companies do. There's a lot of good careers within the field of databases and uh, if you're learning databases, relational databases is going to be the one that you're going to have to learn. But most people who work in databases don't just do relational databases, they do other ones. SQL is that good common language. If you're going to be a database person, you're going to learn SQL and it's the language that's used to manipulate both the databases and the data. So thank you very much. Hope you really enjoyed this and, and get at least a little bit of understanding of databases here. Good programming.